Okay. Uh, today I will be talking about the shadow economies, or sometimes it's also called the informal economies, digital transformation. My name is Jay Unergin. I am from Bogazic University or Bosphorus University from Turkey. And my contact information is uh, on this on this cover slide. Now, just to introduce first, uh, basically um, the rapid development, the rapid advancement of automation and uh, digital technologies, particularly uh, facilitated by large investments in digital technologies, it's really very much reshaping labor markets, not only uh, in Europe, uh, but also, I mean, throughout the world, globally. And it influences, of course, both the informal as well as the formal sector. Generally, uh, when we talk about automation, generally we see it like as something that uh, improves productivity and economic growth, but actually uh, it has uh, also impacts on other things such as labor dynamics, uh, income inequality, and environmental uh, sustainability. And we very much need studies looking at the effects of automation on these, on these variables, on these issues. And in this paper, my aim is basically to investigate uh, the paradox where automation that is originally intended to uh, increase formalization, I mean, to increase the size of the formal sector relative to the informal sector, mm -hmm. actually uh, inadvertently contributes to the expansion of uh, shadow economies. Uh, what I do is that I explore how displaced workers, particularly in developing countries, are uh, taken into or propelled into the informal employment which basically also makes existing inequalities worse and also introduces some new forms of uh, precarious labor. And I also, in this paper, try to assess the environmental consequences of this shift, uh, whether this movement from uh, formal to informal sector due to automation also has, a, has an impact on uh, environmental uh, degradation, for example, environmental issues. Okay, now uh, a little bit some information, some some quick information about the uh, theoretical framework that I have in mind while doing the study. So basically, what I think is that what I uh, hypothesize is that technological progress has uh, traditionally been viewed through two uh, two different mechanisms, two different channels, two different lenses in labor economics. That's my understanding. One is what we call the compensatory uh, forces hypothesis, and the other one is called the displacement hypothesis. The compensatory forces hypothesis basically uh, originates from uh, classical and neoclassical economic theory, and it basically argues that technological advancement, technological improvement, leads to productivity gains, and it results in uh, lower production costs and therefore increases demand for goods and services and ultimately uh, creates job creation, increases employment. Uh, and according to this view, so it's more like positive view, of course, new industries and occupations emerge as old ones become obsolete, mitigating the displacement of uh, workers. But on the other hand, there is this what we call this displacement hypothesis, which is more in line with heterodox, not mainstream, but heterodox economic thoughts, um, which argues that automation uh, replaces human labor, uh, leading to uh, structural unemployment and the concentration of wealth and power in the hands of the few, in the hands of the capital owners primarily. And here in this perspective, automation basically depend, uh, deepens uh, labor market segmentation by polarizing employment opportunities between high skill, high wage jobs and low skill precarious in employment, including informal employment, of course. Um, then uh, there is also this, as you know, as you may know, the dual labor market theory that explains how technology technological change, technological improvements may reinforce inequalities by creating a division between a primary labor market, maybe the formal one, which is characterized by stable employment, high wages and worker protections, and a secondary one, which is uh, the informal one here, uh, characterized by low wages and job insecurity. Uh, and basically, if we um, uh, apply these theories to automation, we can then argue that, I believe, when digital technologies displace workers without generating equivalent employment opportunities in the formal sector, individuals resort to shadow economic activities, informal activities. Uh, and that could be more pronounced in developing countries where institutional quality, labor market institutional quality is uh, much lower and formal employment opportunities are uh, much more, much more limited. 
And then basically the cost of compliance with formal sector regulations outweigh the benefits, then the business and workers may opt for informality. And the automation now, which is basically at the core of this presentation, uh, can make this process worse actually uh, in, in two, two, two different channels. One could be the displacement of workers without formal absorption. I mean, when automation replaces routine jobs in industries, such as, for example, manufacturing and services, uh, workers with low adaptability may find themselves unable to re-enter the formal sector due to what? Due to skill mismatches. And um, since they have limited alternative employment opportunities elsewhere, they have to turn to informal work. Uh, and I mean, which is exemplified, I mean, in a few uh, examples here, like small scale entrepreneurship, uh, gig based labor or underground employment. The other channel is the second channel is the technology enabled informalization. Uh, here, basically, uh, the idea is that that the digital platforms may facilitate informal economic activities by reducing transaction costs and creating decentralized work arrangements. While gig economy platforms such as Uber, TaskRabbit, or Fiverr offer new work opportunities, they often lack worker protections, and their job conditions very much resemble uh, shadow economy employment structures. I mean, there is also this uh, notion of the inst uh, coming from the institutional economic theory of Douglas North that can further explain uh, how weak regulatory frameworks can contribute to the expansion of shadow economies. Um, and... Um, and also one more thing maybe to, to look at is uh, with respect to the dimension of gender, uh, gender issues. Uh, a critical dimension here in terms of the automation's impact on the labor market is uh, the gendered effects, uh, because there are very much gendered effects here. Uh, to the best of my reading of the literature, feminist economic theories very much emphasize that technological progress does not occur uh, in a vacuum, and it very much interacts with uh, existing gender norms, which further reinforces inequalities in the labor market outcomes. There are some studies here that I am citing uh, that you can, uh, you are welcome to look at that uh, show that this uh, autom automation indeed, uh, in line with this hypothesis, disproportionately affects female dominated sectors, such as clerical work, uh, textile industries, retail services. We also have seen the, the effects, this gender effects during the pandemic, through the pandemic actually. Um, and also in almost every countries, in every country, uh, female workers, women are uh, overrepresented in informal uh, informal employment. Um, and also digital transformation here can further exacerbate uh, gender disparities through the rise of what we call digital peace work, where women engage in micro tasks on platforms such as Amazon Mechanical Turk or Upwork, uh, which pay low, I mean, low salaries or low, low, which make low payments for jobs uh, without any uh, social security. And they very much are characterized by high level of uh, precarity, uh, similar to conditions of informal employment. And also there is this theory of Akerlof and Cranton's identity economics, uh, which is suggesting that gender norms shape economic behavior and which limit women's access to high skill technology driven jobs. And as automation eliminates middle tier jobs, women who lack Reskilling opportunities uh, are more likely to be, to be pushed, pushed into uh, low-wage, precarious, informal employment. Um, I also have some discussion here with respect to eco, uh, what we call eco-innovation to discuss the relationship between automation and environmental sustainability, which is something widely debated in ecological economics as far as I have read. Uh, and generally, the, the, those ecological economists, they argue that uh, automation-driven informalization has adverse environmental consequences through two mechanisms. One is the pr proliferation of unregulated small-scale uh, enterprises, which are, since they are unregulated, uh, they are uh, creating more environmental damage. And then the uh, through outsourcing of environmental costs, where large firms that automate production may outsource environmentally harmful tasks to informal workers. Um, I also here cited what the, the famous Jevons paradox that can further explain why automation does not necessarily lead to reduced environmental harm, uh, because as technology increases efficiency, production costs decline, leading to greater consumption and resource extraction. And when displaced workers migrate to informal economies, to informal employment, 
they can engage in resource intensive activities to sustain their livelihoods and again can cause environmental degradation. Uh, here I talk also a little bit about the historical instance of automation affecting those issues. Um, I mean, it's examples from industrial revolution, post-war for this economy, and then even looking at uh, the early 21st century, the digital age, the starting of digital age. I mean, they all, I believe, this 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 this, this provides, in my opinion, a, a multi-dimensional understanding of the complex relationship between automation, shadow economies, and environmental. Uh, environmental sustainability. Now, to go to my empirical analysis based on this theory, I first create what we call an automation index. Um, it's an uh, annual cross-country panel data analysis that I will be presenting shortly. Um, I first create what I call an automation index using data from International Federation of Robotics and as well as from the WDI of the World Bank. Uh, and this is how I construct the automation index by dividing a uh, number of industrial robots in a country I in year T to manufacturing empl employment in that country in that year and multiply it by 10,000. So in a sense, it's the index provided by the number of industrial robots per employees per 10,000 employees in the manufacturing sector. And then what I do is that I regress several dependent variables. Uh, in this case, shadow economy. I also do some robustness checks with uh, informal employment rate. And then later on, I use some inequality and environmental measures uh, to its lack, to the lack of the dependent variable, as well as to automation and uh, some controls and uh, country and time fixed effects. Uh, and I also, in the paper I, today, I mean, in the presentation, uh, for the sake of time, I will not go into uh, that many details, but I also um, try to take care of potential endogeneity issues uh, by using some uh, instrumental variable uh, estimations. And the relationships that I hypothesize to be empirically tested are, one, a positive, I expect a positive relationship between automation and shadow economic growth, particularly in developing countries. I expect a negative effect of automation on formal employment and a corresponding increase in the informal employment rates. I expect uh, an increase in inequality, inequality as automation induced labor displacement primarily affects low skilled workers. And I also expect a negative environmental effect as displaced workers turn to unregulated high pollution activities. And here are some results for the shadow economy. I mean, when I regress shadow economy size as a percentage of GDP on automation and then some bunch of controls, uh, what I see is, I mean, the, the, the first row, automation seems to have a strong positive effect on the size of the shadow economy, statistically significant at 1% level, suggesting that increased automation leads to a larger informal economy, uh, like they do to displaced uh, workers seeking informal employment. Uh, then I also do a similar regression with informal employment now as a percentage of uh, total non-agricultural employment. So the first one was shadow economy size as a percentage of GDP. The dependent variable here was shadow economy as a percentage of GDP. Here it is the informal employment as a percentage of total non-agricultural uh, employment. And again, here automation seems to have a positive coefficient, uh, reinforcing the idea that displaced workers enter the informal sector, informal employment. I ran some results with the Gini coefficient as a dependent variable, where uh, I regress now the Gini index uh, on automation and other uh, other variables. Again, automation seems to have a positive coefficient here, uh, suggesting that the higher the automation, the higher the Gini index, the higher the level of income inequality. And then I do some analysis with uh, with environmental with an environmental indicator, which is the CO two emissions per capita, uh, and uh, here again. Uh, I see a positive correlation between a positive association between automation and CO2 emissions, supporting our hypothesis that informalization uh, through automation may lead to environmentally harmful activities. Of course, here now it is not clear whether the whether the the, the, the relationship between automation uh, and CO2 emissions works through uh, through informality. And to to support that further, I also do the following systems estimations. I run two equations at the same time. Uh, the, in the first one, I regress shadow economy on automation and 
on automation and other variables. And then in the second one, I regress CO2 emissions on shadow economy and other variables. So basically here, now what I see is that if you look at the coefficient of automation here, which is positive, the higher the automation, the larger the size of the shadow economy. And then if you look at the coefficient of the shadow economy here, the larger the size of the shadow economy, uh, the higher the CO2 emissions. So in a sense, then I use this system estimation results as a evidence that the relationship between CO2 emissions and automation may work through the shadow economy. And here, uh, I do the same with uh, the Gini index now. Uh, so I regress shadow economy on automation, but then also on Gini coefficient on shadow economy. So here again, I see that the, the larger the size of the shadow economy is a percentage of GDP, the larger the Gini coefficient, and the larger the uh, the uh, automation index, the larger the size of the shadow economy. So in that sense, again, automation, the higher auto a high level of automation is associated with a larger informal sector, which is in turn associated with a higher Gini coefficient. Um, and I also list some policy uh, recommendations here, a few policy recommendations here. Okay, so based on these results, what could be done uh, I, I have some 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 ideas here in terms of labor market institutions. For example, I suggest expanding social protections, redefine employment classifications, and regulate digital labor platforms. In terms of shadow economy reduction, a few things that can be done include simplifying business registration, enforce labor laws properly, and use digital tax collection. In terms of income inequality, I have uh, suggestions such as implementing progressive taxation, funding reskilling programs, and introducing automation taxes. F to establish gender equality, I suggest supporting women's employment in STEM sectors, regulate informal care work, and expanding child care services. In terms of environmental sustainability, I suggest extending environmental regulations to informal businesses, promoting green adaption, green automation, sorry, and implementing uh, carbon pricing. Finally, last but not least, for uh, the domain of international cooperation, I suggest establishing global labor standards that could go through institutions such as ILO, but as well as uh, ETUI, uh, coordinating, uh, coordinating environmental policies and promoting uh, sustainable uh, automation. Of course, these policy areas, policy recommendations, are not coming out of the empirical analysis here, I mean, the empirical analysis is silent about the effectiveness of each of these policy recommendations, but I still uh, thought that it's worth uh, listing them here at this point. Uh, this is all uh, about my presentation. Uh, thank you for thank you for listening.